Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. Welcome back to Microbiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be discussing the hyperate hydrolysis test. So hyperate is a compound that some bacteria are able to biosynthesize and then they can break it down using an enzyme called hyperacase. So let's look at this in a little more detail and then we'll get into the theory behind the test. So again, around a bacterial cell, there's gonna be compounds floating around that are aromatic compounds. An example would be the amino acid phenylalanine. And these bacteria, some of which may, ex may exist in the microflora of the intestines, can actually take these aromatic compounds and break them down into benzoic acid. And you can see the structure of that molecule right here. Now there's an enzyme right here that bacteria may also have called benzoyl-CoA synthetase. What this does is it activates benzoic acid into this compound over here, which instead of having this OH right here now has a coenzyme A attached. This is benzoyl-CoA. And then there's this enzyme here called NaCl transferase, which effectively just swaps out this coenzyme A here for glycine. And that generates this molecule over here called a hyperate. Now this hyperate molecule can then be broken down by this enzyme called hyperacase. This is a hydrolytic enzyme that uses water really just to split this bond right here between the nitrogen atom and this carbon atom. And when it hydrolyzes this bond, it gives you benzoic acid and glycine. And that reaction is hyperate hydrolysis. This is just the name of the enzyme right here. So that's what we're testing for. Now of these products, benzoic acid and glycine, glycine is really used in the test because as we'll see in a few minutes, we're going to incubate this with ninhydrin, and this ninhydrin molecule can react with glycine, and when it does, it turns the media blue, this kind of bluish violet color. And so if you perform a hyperate hydrolysis test, and the solution stays kind of this cloudy or clearish color, that's a negative test. That bacterial species, whatever it is, does not express hyperacase or it does not hydrolyze hyperate. But if you get a result that is bluish violet, that test is positive. And that's because the ninhydrin reacts with the glycine, a product of hyperate hydrolysis. And so we can use this reaction right here and incubation with ninhydrin to determine whether or not the bacteria expresses hyperacase, whether it can hydrolyze hyperate. And so here's kind of the general reaction scheme right here. So we start off with a couple uh, media right here. Um, this one on the left is eventually going to be negative. The one on the right is eventually going to be positive, but nothing yet. They're both identical at this point. So of course we have to inoculate the media with our bacteria and then we incubate it. And this step right here is really just to grow up the bacteria. We haven't done the hyperate hydrolysis test yet. Okay. So this one on the left here has one species, this one on the right has another species. And then what we do is we introduce a hyperate tablet. This is just a tablet that contains a lot of hyperate and provides a molecule uh, that hyperacase can act on and break it down into benzoic acid and glycine. Once we put the hyperate tablet in there, we incubate it and the bacteria are then al are allowed to metabolize that hyperate from the tablet. And once there's sufficient time of the bacteria with that tablet, then we can introduce the ninhydrin reagent. Now, if we think about this, if the bacteria express this enzyme hyperacase, they're going to be able to break down the hyperate from that tablet into benzoic acid and glycine. And then when we introduce the ninhydrin, it will react with glycine and it will produce this bluish violet color. So over here on the right, this is our positive test. However, if the bacteria does not express hyperacase, well then they're not going to be able to break down the hyperate from that tablet. So are they going to be producing benzoic acid or glycine? No. And so there's going to be no glycine available for that ninhydrin to react with. And so as a result, it's going to remain this clear color or basically just the color of the original inoculate. So remember, if we have a negative test, there's no color change. And that's because the bacteria 
do not express hyperacase and cannot hydrolyze hyperate. But a positive result is that color change to bluish violet, indicating that there is glycine present from the reaction of hyperacase, and then that glycine reacts with anhydrin and turns bluish violet. So hopefully this video gave you some good information about the hyperate hydrolysis test, the theory, and how it works and how to interpret it. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.